Hey family, today we're talking about sound conception. The sound you're going for really starts with the sound in your head. All right, be forewarned, this video doesn't involve much bass playing, but it does help lay the foundation for the playing you'll be doing in the next videos. We're all at different stages in our sound journey. Maybe some of you are just starting out and want to sound like your favorite bass player. Maybe you want to sound like Flea or Joe Dart or even Victor Wooten. Maybe you're starting to assimilate multiple bass influences. You want to sound like a cross between Esperanza Spalding and Mark King. Or you started to branch out beyond the bass, and you're thinking along the lines of, what if Chick Corea was a bass player? What would that sound like? Or maybe you've hit a point where you no longer want to wear your influences on your sleeve, and you just want to sound like you. I'm not here to pass judgment on anyone because of their desired sound or influences or their stage in the game. The good news is, the process of developing your own sound is similar in all of the above scenarios. How can you develop a clearer picture of the sound you're after? Today, we're going to literally develop that picture. I want you to get very explicit with your sound goal. All right, some of you may be saying, wait a minute, I don't have just one sound goal. I like a huge variety of music. And the more versatile I am, the more gigs I'm gonna get. Okay, I hear you and I like a lot of different music too. But if your main reason for versatility is to get more gigs, what I'm hearing is versatility will get me more money and that makes me think of two things. Okay, number one, why are you a musician? If it's to earn a moderate amount of money, there are really a lot of ways to earn a living with more money and fewer trade-offs in other areas of your life. In the amount of time and effort it takes to be a professional musician, and I'm not even talking about world class, you could have a very successful career in another line of work. Most of us probably didn't get into music to be rich. We started because we love the music. I want you to channel that. With that said, the question here is how do you incorporate elements of the music you love into your sound? The other thing I want you to think about, point number two, is the trade-off between being versatile and being identifiable. We don't listen to John Coltrane because he could slam out some fat reggae tunes, and we don't listen to Bob Marley because of his modal jazz. Sure, there are a handful of amazingly versatile and identifiable musicians out there. Drummers like Steve Gadd and Vinnie Caliuta and bass players like Anthony Jackson and Pino Palladino come to mind. But realize their versatility was developed over decades and is more about going deep into a few styles than it is about being able to cover all styles. All right, rant over. Let's get down to business. First, let's write down five music influences. I like to do this in the form of particular songs that I want to incorporate into my sound. Put these songs into a playlist as well. My list might look something like this. All right, number one, Downtown by the Yellow Jackets with Jimmy Haslip. Number two, Tropical Jam. This is Michelle Camilo with Anthony Jackson on bass. Number three, Ave Cesaria by Stromae. Number four, Roots of Coincidence. It's a Pat Metheny track. And then last, let's put in Sound Chaser by Yes. Next to the list, I want you to write down what it is you like about each track. This should be pretty short, no more than a phrase or two. Also, don't feel constrained to just write about the sound of the bass. Maybe what you like about the track is the keyboards. On Downtown, I really love the way the bass and the sax are doubled, and I like the melodic bass solo with the keyboard bass under it. I'm also a huge fan of Will Kennedy's snare sound. Number two, Tropical Jam. I love the fast piano and bass lines and the precision and the groove here. Okay, on the Stromae track, the organic feel of the voices and the guitar and the clapping is awesome. On Roots of Coincidence, I like the guitar melody and solo and the song's harmonic structure. Okay, and finally on Sound Chaser, I've always been in love with the sound of the keyboards and the bass in the intro. There's just something so exciting and aggressive about it. All right, now let's take it out a little further. Are there non-musical influences that you think are part of your sound? What if you were thinking about it as an overall aesthetic and not just about your bass tone? I might add Neil Stevenson. I love his novels like Seven Eves or Cryptonomicon. Or I could add a setting like the mountains or even outer space. What about art influences? Is it busy or more minimalist? Okay, now I'm gonna put these concepts into a mood board. This is going to be a visual reminder of my goals to display in my practice area. I pulled down the album covers and other images into a folder. You can use an online mood board creator like Canva or Go Mood Board, or even put it into Pinterest. I personally like the Canva version for the flexible layouts and how easy it is to use. So here I'm going to quickly make one. Let's choose a template. Yeah, I think that looks good. I like teal. Now I'll upload my pictures and drag them onto the canvas. Let's see. Yeah, I like that there. All 
All right. And I'm ready to download and print. Hmm. Oh, I can share it too. All right, there's a link below. Share links to your mood boards in the comments below. I'd love to see them. Okay, and here we are. This feels a little like a cooking show where they put a dish in the oven and then pull out the same dish already done a few seconds later. Now that we have a clearer picture of our goal, we're all set to move on to the next phase, which is deepening our understanding of our preferences. I hope you enjoyed the video. Click like and subscribe below to get the rest of the series as we work on developing an identifiable sound. Did you find this video valuable? Let me know either way. All right, thanks for watching.